Well, you can see I've been cutting up some wood. This is a piece of English walnut. It's about 10 by 10. The bark is falling off, but I think I'll go ahead and cut the corners off and we'll get it inside. I'll mount it up on the lathe and see what we can make out of it. So I'll see you there. All right, I've kind of got it semi-round. It's about eight and a half this way and nine that way. I think it's about five and a half tall here and six here. I've got a hole in it for a worm screw and looks like it's got some nice grain in it so let's see what we can make out of this. Okay, I'm going to grab my 5 8 bowl gouge and we'll uh, start turning on this. Alright, all set. 650 RPM. Got some really interesting feature going on here. And hopefully I can cut through that crack. Let's get this rounded up here and we'll see what we can do. Okay, just resharpen my 5 8 bowl gouge and let's see if we can turn that crack away. Trying to turn this into a more of a looking kind of like a pot. That's close. Pretty close. Okay. Don't really know if that's a crack or if it's some kind of an inclusion in there. I'll drizzle a little CA in there and then I'll let this sit for a while and I'll be back and we'll cut that away. I put some thin star bond on this and let it sit for quite a while. I need to flatten the bottom then I'll come back and work on this shape a little bit more see if that uh, crack needs anything else. I'm actually doing 800 RPM. Well, I got a little bit here. It's not. Let's take another cut on here. I'm going to try this gouge I have with a 40 40 grinder on it.
Okay, that's pretty smooth. I'm going to taper this down a little bit more because I want to clean that up anyways. Let's go ahead and flatten this and get a tenon on here. Last night I took a cut across this surface. I started the tenon and then I needed to stop to help somebody and I decided to let this sit until today. So I came out here, I started rotating it to look at it. This area that I thought was going to be a nice feature was actually a soft, I don't know what was going on there, whether a bug did it or it was just a, something that rotted. It just was not going to work out. I decided to go ahead and see if I could fill it with coffee grounds and CA. So I put a little in there just to see how it would go. I'll, I'll do the rest here, show you what I'm doing. I don't like to do this, but I'm not going to be able to use this with that big hole in it. So I'll get some coffee grounds in there, and then I'll soak, soak that up. I like to let it sit for just a little while. And I'll just push it down like so, get it mixed in. like so. Get some more in there and then soak it up again. I'll do this until it's filled up. I'll let it sit. I've got something else to do for a few hours. Hopefully when I come back it doesn't come flying out of there. Okay I'm back and it's probably sat for about five hours. And now I'll go ahead and turn this off and see what it looks like. My 5 8 bowl gouge and spinning about 800 RPM. I'll go ahead and sand this up and I'll start with 80 grit 2 inch disc with the lathe running in reverse at 350. I'll sand it up through 400 and I'll come back and we'll put a finish on it. I've got it all sanded up to 400 and I've decided on using polycrylic for the finish, so I'll use some of the Menwax water-based sanding sealer. And it might take a couple of coats of this. This kind of hides the grain when you first put it on, so let's wipe it off and see. There we go. That's kind of what it's going to look like there. but. I like to brush it on and let it really soak in on the first coat. I'll get one or two coats of this on and then I uh, will flip it around and I'll put the final finish on it at the same time that I do the inside.
there's that area I filled and I think it actually looks pretty nice. All right, I'll see you when it gets flipped around and it's probably going to be tomorrow. Been busy today so I didn't get to work on this a lot. I've got it flipped around and there's not a lot of room if I use the tailstock for support. So I'll start with a half inch bowl gouge and see how it works out. And we're doing about 725 RPM. Okay, that's cutting pretty good. I think I'll switch to the 5 8 now. I'm going to put a little light on it too. Let me turn the RPM up. About 900. And I think I'll run in reverse so I can see this a little bit better and get a slightly better angle on it. All right, I'll be running in reverse at the same 900 RPM. Okay, we got it. I'm going to switch back to this side now because I'll be able to reach it and it might be a little easier. Okay, I've got it down fairly consistent, quarter five sixteenths, all the way to the bottom, and the bottom is maybe maybe three eighths but I also have a slight recess in there and by the time I cut the tenon off that'll be about the same as the wall I think I'll just go ahead and go over it with the negative rake scraper and see if we can get it smooth enough to sand and I think we'll be just about there I know you can't see much, so I'll get that finished up, and then we'll sand it, and we can get the finish on the inside. All right, I'm all ready to sand, but with the angle coming back this way, it really makes it hard to get in here with the power drill. It's going to hit the rim here, even with my extended holder that I made. I can get down to that far, but to take care of it from here up, I made this a number of years ago. I can get in here like that and do all that. I'll show you a little bit of both of these starting with 80 grit and I'll work my way to 400 and we'll come back and we'll get a finish on this. All right, we're doing about 400 going forward. And then we'll use this. I can almost get up there, but I don't want to get any closer and then scuff this up. I'll see you when we're all done sanding, and we'll put a finish on the inside. I ended up getting the inside finished with the sanding sealer. 
But I wanted to show you the whole process on the outside because you can see it better. So I have three coats of the Minwax water-based sanding sealer on here. And it looks pretty nice, it's smooth, but I like to go over it with this white abrasive pad. It's, I think it's the finest you can get. I'll do this in reverse. And I'll actually spin it up about 800 RPM. I'm just kind of buffing it out, making sure there isn't anything going on that's going to surprise me later. Make it nice and smooth. And that's a pretty decent finish the way it is. But I'm going to go a little bit farther. This is the polycrylic. I don't brush that on at this point in time. I'll wipe it on and I'm not putting a very heavy coat on there. If you do, you're liable to have streaks that you have to work on. If what you're putting on it is already smooth, this has a better chance of being smooth after you get it on. Kind of like sanding. You want to make sure everything's sanded to where you want it before you put anything over the top of that. Okay, I'm going to slow this down and just make sure by doing this that it's all covered and it's nice and smooth. If I see any spots that look dry or different, I'll wipe it down like that. So that's that process. I need to go somewhere. I, I'm out to shop for something for a very special thing coming up and later on in May I plan on showing you. So I'll see you later. I'll come back and do another coat of this. I won't show you that but then I'll polish it out with the axe abrasive paste. So I'll see you a little later. I got two coats of the polycrylic on it. I went over it again with the white scotch bright. Now I'll use the axe abrasive paste and polish. I'll just show a little of this. I do have a video out on how I use the abrasive paste and polish. So I'll put a link in my description if you'd like to see how I do that. So I will be doing this in reverse starting at 400 and progress up to about 800. Alright, I'll finish this out and when I come back we just need to remove the tin. I've got the piece up against the padded block. I'm going to go ahead and remove that tenon. Got a half inch bowl gouge. We're doing 700 RPM to start with. I'm going to slow it down to about 200 RPM. And we'll see if we can cut this off. All right, we did it. I'll get this sanded up and I'll be right back. It's all done. I think it's a very pretty piece of English walnut. It has lots of nice grain and a lot of nice color changes in it. It also has kind of an odd feature in here. When I first roughed this out, that area was kind of a tan color and it felt pretty hard. I figured it would stay. After going a little bit farther up here to get the shape, I stopped and I noticed a big chunk had fallen out and it was pretty soft at that point in time. So I dug it out, I filled it with copy grounds and Starbond CA and it was so deep that I didn't even have to do anything to it when I hollowed the inside. Finished seven inches in diameter, it's four and a half inches tall and the walls are a quarter to five sixteenths. And here's the base. I used three coats of Minwax water-based sanding sealer and two coats of the Minwax polycrylic for the finish. 
I then went over it with X abrasive paste and polish that gave it a very smooth finish. Feels great. So this was a fairly simple turning but I had a lot going on last week and I knew if I was going to get anything done it had to be fairly simple so that's why I did this. But stay tuned I have something a lot more involved for next week and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video you can let me know by hitting that like button. Also leave a comment and tell me what you think. I love reading them all and I do my best to answer them all. If you're currently not subscribed, please consider doing so. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. I do all types of turnings and I love doing them all. Let me know your favorites. Thanks again and until the next time, see you later.